Hello my dear friends, you seem to like the quick grid of .NET 8, so let's continue with that thing. In today's video we will have a look at filtering. So how would you use a string to filter some values in the grid or even minimum and maximum values? In this video we will cover that one and if you learn something and like this video I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for supporting me. It really does make a difference. And if you're interested, then maybe check out my newsletter. Thank you very much for considering. And now let's start with the tutorial. So real quick, what is happening here? We've got the preview edition of uh, Visual Studio 2022. It's the version 17.7.0 preview one because we are using .NET 8. And if you wanna know how that looks, well, you can see it here. For instance, in the client project, we see target framework is .NET 8.0. And with that, we get the quick grid. And in the last video, we already created this quick grid. This is how it looks. We are grabbing some weather forecasts from the example template here in this ASP.NET Core hosted Blazor application. And that's the result, all right? So we've got the old table down here with 50 values and here now the data or the data grid or the quick grid version with pagination and so on. And now the thing is we already know how to sort this stuff. We know how to use some buttons, but what I started in the last video was actually doing this stuff here. So you can add column options to every single column. And now I want to turn this into a search filter bar box, not a bar, it's well, it's kind of of a bar. You know what I mean? I just want to filter the summaries here and with that, all the entries of the weather forecast. So how would you do that? And just so you know, I've got this from the official side of QuickGrid. So if you want to, you can look this up there or you just grab the code from my GitHub repository available in the video description. The link is there. So if you want, stop the video, go there, but please, I'd really appreciate it if you continue watching and maybe even click the like button and maybe subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for that. Well, anyways, we've got the property column summary, all right? So with that, we access the summary property from every forecast, and then we can also add column options. You see it already here, this is our input. And now when we wanna use a search bar here, we can simply first type uh, type search and then we can also use the beautiful autofocus, auto, auto focus, Jesus. And then we have to bind this thing to a value, right? So some kind of text we wanna enter. So add bind and then we will add another variable here, which is called for instance, summary filter or summary search, something like that then we can uh, bind or choose a binding event, meaning when do you actually, do we actually want to run this filter? So let's say when the user just enters any value, so on input, then we want to filter that. So with that, we add, add bind colon event, almost event, and this is then on input. And then we can also, for instance, add a placeholder like uh, summary, all right? See it here, Visual Studio doesn't like that, of course. So let's add this variable real quick down here in our code block. Now we say we've got a string that can be null and this is our summary filter. But this is not enough because we actually wanna filter the values, right? So how would we do that? Just let me explain first. We've got our forecasts already from uh, here, from our weather forecast service, the web API. So we make a get call, then these are our forecasts. We store them here and then here we turn these into an I queryable. So what we can do now is we can actually grab this and filter them. So one additional step actually, after the call, you wanna filter them and then we use these values here for our items property. So let's do that real quick. We just add a property here, I query able of type weather forecast. And let's just call this filtered forecasts, for instance. And now we actually only need get. And here now we say var results. And now if 
our is null or empty. Our string is not null or empty. Then we do the following. First, we check for the summary filter, of course. And here then we actually write our filter. But I forgot, of course, one thing. We not only have the result here, we turn our forecasts now into the queryable again. So pretty much exactly the same thing that we did up here, right? So here we have our queryable forecasts. And now we grab instead these filtered forecasts here and put them here. All right. And now the actual filter looks then like that. We just say, regarding our result, we want everything where and then a lambda expression f for forecast the summary almost the summary contains summary filter and we want to ignore the case so string comparison current culture ignore case and one parenthesis is missing. Yep. And in the end, we return the result. All right, I know uh, here are some null warnings. I don't care for now. So <laughs> let's just save that and rebuild this thing already is rebuilding, probably. Yeah, and there it is. So here now we have our summary column again, we can open the column options and here autofocus works. That's great. And now we can just say I want only cool weather. And you see that with the sometimes with the first sometimes only with the second character I enter, it is already filtering. This is not making any call, we've got all the values here on the client, and then it is filtering the values there. But still, I think already a great way to build a custom filter and a really quick way. Well, it's the quick grid, right? So this works just fine. Okay, this is one filter I wanted to show you. And another one is a filter for for instance, the minimum and the maximum values for the temperature. So let's add this real quick as well. And for that we need again, first two variables here, a minimum and a maximum uh, value for the Celsius temperature, for instance. So let's just say int min temp c minus 50 maybe and the same for the maximum temperature, which is also 50. And then we can actually do the same here or use the same property here, where we now say first filter this uh, corresponding to the to, to the values we have entered in the for the minimum and the maximum temperature. So here now, we say again, lump the expression, we need this time the temperature C, for instance. So give me the forecasts where the Celsius temperature is greater or equal to min, 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 min temp C. Hadn't had a great night. Toddler was awake a couple of times. But that's another topic. And here now, uh, less than or equal max time, I think you get the idea. So this would be this filter here. And then of course, we need something to to actually set these values. So in here now for our property column, we open that again, close the property column here. And now again, add some column options like that. And now here we need something where we can well, enter the minimum and the maximum values, I think a slider would be nice. So let's use an input of the type range. First, a paragraph for the min value. And then here we say input, almost input type range, we can close this already. And then here, similar stuff in essence, we bind this this time to min temp C. And again, the event should be on inputs. Alright. And for the values, we can say 
again minus 50 and the max value is then 50 maybe and let's also add a span for the actual value so the user can see the value and here we just say the current min temp c okay something like that and now let me just copy and paste this max and here also max and same thing here maybe and this should be it already so let's save that should be rebuilding yep and now let me sort this first so here we've got minus 19 and here now we've got our beautiful sliders and we can say i want at least zero and here we've got three eight and so on and when we sort this the other way around then we can filter this even further. Isn't that great? So that's it. I hope you liked it and learned something. If so, you know the drill. Thank you very much for hitting the like button and maybe subscribing to my channel. Maybe you want to check out my newsletter as well. And as always, you can get the code on GitHub. Link is in the video description. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Take care.